Hey, so for this fourth video, I thought we'd talk about Mesh Fusion. And to be clear, this is not a tutorial uh, per se. Uh, it's more a look at how I incorporate Mesh Fusion into my workflow when I'm making game art to, to solve certain topology challenges and things like that. Uh, we'll look at some of the advantages and disadvantages of it and where you might want to use it to speed things along. Uh, most of this stuff you can apply to any live Boolean kit. Uh, I know there's one for Blender, I think for Maya, and I'm not sure if there is one for Max, uh, but if there isn't, there probably will be one soon because it's just too useful not to have in the toolbox. So let's take a look at uh, Modo. Okay, so here we are in Modo. Now at its core, uh, Mesh Fusion is really about taking your sub-D compatible meshes and smashing them together to create hard to model shapes. That's the way I look at it. And just as a quick demonstration, we'll just take a fast look at how this works. Now let me grab, uh, these are some primitive shapes you see at the bottom of my screen that come with Mesh Fusion, just to give you something to work with. So if I throw in a cube and we'll take this uh, ellipsoid shape, right? Uh, these are just regular meshes. You know, they could have been modeled or used with primitives or whatever. So if I put them together like this, and let's say that the prop I'm building calls for these two meshes to be joined in a nice way with a bordered edge between them. Okay, that's a lot of monotonous modeling and trying to maintain the curvature of the ellipsoid and all that. It's just, you know, it's a huge pain in the butt. So if I use Mesh Fusion for this, I can just grab those meshes, say make me a new fusion uh, that's a union of these meshes, and we're done. Now, like I said, this is not a tutorial, so I'm not going to explain what some of this stuff is. We'll just turn off the tree and the mesh visibility. Uh, but you can see that now we have these shapes combined, right? Uh, and there's a nice border between them. And one nice thing with Mesh Fusion that I'm not sure the other packages have, but if I select this edge, uh, I can then adjust the width of it and to get a softer transition or a tighter transition. And I can also adjust the hardness of it, you know, which gives me either a really soft profile or a hard bevel. If I pull all the way back here, right, you can get kind of a harsh transition. So once you're done with that, you've got this shape put together that would have been very difficult to model out. Well, if not difficult, then at least time consuming. And of course, you know, the big advantage is that I can now grab this shape and I can move it around. I, I, I can drag it to different locations and the uh, merging of the shapes maintains. So that's the basics of Mesh Fusion. Uh, now I'll show you a real world game art example that might actually uh, apply to your life. Hang on. So for a real world art example, uh, this is something that I had to do recently. So it serves as a perfect example. So uh, let's say you have a rigid handle like this. This could be for a weapon or whatever. And the concept art calls for you to, to countersink a screw into this handle. Now looking at the topology of this or the shape of it, you know, it's got this wave all down every side of it. And to cut a circle into that is difficult because you can't get it to be smooth or pinch free without a lot of, of fiddling around. So what I do is I use Mesh Fusion for this sort of thing. So let's say I've got this handle, which I do. Uh, all I do is I make a cutter mesh like this. Uh, just a simple cylinder that's, you know, that sub these correctly. So I grab the, so I move the cutter into the, the handle mesh uh, where I want the screw to sit. And then I just use Mesh Fusion, I say, grab those two meshes, make a new Mesh Fusion out of it, or sorry, uh, subtract first from selected. Okay, turning this stuff off, and you can see that I've got a nice hole cut into this thing. And it's pinch free and it smooths perfectly and everything's happy. And like I mentioned before, I've got this, this handy little strip that I can use to make the hole look a little better so I can make it a little wider if I want to. I can harden up the profile a little bit, make it look a little more machined, you know. And once I get it looking exactly the way I want, I'm done. And still you can see, even with fooling with that strip, everything looks, looks perfect. Now, 
Uh, the next step for me would be to convert this to a regular mesh and then use that to bake out normal maps and whatever else. Uh, the common complaint that I hear with Mesh Fusion is that the mesh is very heavy at the end. And it's true, it's heavy, I'll show you. So if I grab my Mesh Fusion object, I convert it to a mesh, and then I, uh, you can see it's heavy here. Let me jump back to the modeling tab just so we can get a better look at, uh, at what I see. Okay, so yeah, that mesh is heavy. Uh, it's very dense. And like I said, said, I don't care because I'm only baking normal maps from this. So I don't care what the topology looks like. I don't care about the density. I don't care about anything. Uh, the, only thing I, uh, the only thing I really care about uh, is that my viewport continues to update in real time. As long as that's happening, yeah, I'm out. <laughs> so I'll throw a default material back on here. And just to finish this up, what I typically do is I'll take like a screw head mesh that I've got you know, as part of a kit bash kit that I have off to the side and just drop that screw head in there. Make sure it's positioned at the right depth where I want it. And I'm, I'm done with it. Now I can uh, I wrap a low poly cylinder around this thing and bake it out and the countersunk screw will be right there. Now it's true you could probably get the same effect by using some floating geometry or whatever, but I find Mesh Fusion to be uh, kind of a halfway point between that and the precision of CAD. So for making holes and, and curvy things and that, uh, it fits right in that sweet spot where I really find it efficient to use. And uh, let's move on to the next video where we'll talk about. So one of the other advantages of Mesh Fusion is being able to quickly prototype shapes. Um, Let's say you wanted to do something where you, uh, I didn't really plan this out that well, so you have to bear with me, but let's say you got this thing, you want to subtract that from that, so you're like, okay, let's try that. Let's make a subtract first from the second. Okay, great. So then we have this, and then from this we can copy the polygons to a new mesh item shrink it down a bit and say, well, what if this also had some pieces that were stuck around the outside like that? Drag that onto this mesh, say union, melts those together, and they're like, okay. So you're like, okay, yeah, I, I like the way that's looking, but what if there was a, me there was a shape like this, which we kind of put here over top of it. Well, let's tilt it a little bit like this and pulled it down and we said, okay, so let's do that. To, so I'm gonna turn on my meshes again and say, let's, let's intersect that. And you're like, uh-huh, okay. Yeah, I like the way that shape's looking. Uh, let's try to center up this hole a little bit so you can grab the capsule mesh, drag it over, not all in real time. And right here, scale it down a little, scale it down or up, kind of be like, okay, yeah, I like that with a little lip on the bottom. So let's keep that, pull this up, and just keep going like that uh, until you end up with a shape that you like, right? Uh, that's a whole lot faster than trying to sketch it out in Photoshop or trying to model it out. Uh, once you have this, you can convert this into a real mesh, a topo on top of it, and you've got your design complete. So the fluidity of having the live booleans really pays off in certain situations. So I think we're at about our time limit here, or very close to it. So uh, that's about it for Mesh Fusion for today. Uh, if there's something specific you want to ask about it, uh, leave it in the comments and I'll try to answer as best I can. Uh, but this video was just to give you a taste of what it can do for you um, outside of the example videos you find on like the Foundry website or you know, you know the official videos. Um, they show you crazy stuff like bike helmets and things. And I wanted to show you a couple of the more everyday type approaches. So thanks for watching, till next time.